you ever listen to music before? It's wild. I'm preaching to the choir here, I know, but the more you think about it, the more true it is. Music is this manipulation of vibrations that are sent through the air, but they're like fancy vibrations. When they hit your ear, your ears go, ooh. They're charmed and flattered by these strange noises, and all of a sudden things start happening in your body and you're not really sure if you can control them or not. Like is it voluntary that I'm tapping my foot right now or throwing myself into a mosh pit? And this noise, depending on who's making it and what they're using to make it, can make you feel understood and validated, whether that be sad, happy, angry, pissed off, jealous, regretful, I feel everything. What is happening to me? Now this alone should be enough. Because for some of us, it's not enough to appreciate the general phenomenon of music. No, we need to obsess. These people, ladies and gentlemen, are the topic of today's video. Because I've selected some of the craziest fan bases in all of music, and they're fighting for the top spot on my tier list. And I decided to measure this quote unquote craziness by three criteria. Drip, zeal, and how based or cringe the actual artist is. And by zeal, I'm talking about just how motivated these crazy fan bases can be to show their commitment to their favorite artists, whether it be emotional, monetarily, or God forbid, physical. Scoring high in this field alone could actually put that crazy fan base at the top of this tier list. But who am I as a monolingual goofball to make comment and judge these people that I don't know? Well, folks, I identify as one of these people. Now, which artist am I a crazy fan for? Well, I guess you're just gonna have to watch the video to find out. I know, what a concept to be watching a video on YouTube. Quick little disclaimer here, um, music, along with all other creative ventures, is subjective. That means everybody's entitled to their opinion because it can mean so many different things to so many different people. I just think that this is going to be a fun topic to dive deep on because I really do appreciate how crazy some fan bases are regardless of whether or not I actually like them or whether I like the artist. You can just appreciate the commitment. That's what I like to see. And also, I want to get opinions from you guys, and fair warning, I'm going to talk shit about you. And I'm okay with that. Now, folks, the first crazy fan base we're going to get into is a heavy hitter. A true Hall of Fame fan base that most fan bases wish they were. These fans lead by example to show just exactly why their artist is the best above all else. So let's take a little bit of time and look at Juggalos. Juggalos for the uninitiated are devout fans of ICP, the Insane Clown Posse, a hip-hop duo out of Detroit comprised of Shaggy 2 Dope and Violent J. From what I gathered, they paint their faces like their 2019 Joker rejects and rap about magnets. Water, fire, air and dirt, fucking magnets, how do they work? Nevertheless, these clown personas were irresistible to people who finally felt understood by this. And ICP really figured out a way to diversify their brand, because not only do they have the music, they also have pro wrestling. Juggalo Championship Wrestling, to be exact. Still give him the pop, though, because he's still taking someone up. This spinning horn wheel, and it looked like shit! I have a friend of mine who went to one of these uh, Juggalo Championship Wrestling shows, and um, he said he had never felt more afraid for his life before and everything smelt like feet. Juggalos will paint their faces in the traditional clown makeup and meet up at the Gathering of the Juggalos. It's a music festival headlined by ICP and they gather like-minded artists and at the Gathering of Juggalos, being a Juggalo is the most normal thing that you can be. I'm obviously skipping over a lot here as I will with the rest of the fan bases on this list, but for Juggalos, I just can't help but admire the fact that all of these people, millions of people, gravitate towards this weird niche rap group and they fund their music festivals. Like, how is that not S tier? You may not like ICP, I know I don't, and I'm not sure I could stand at being a gathering of them, but it's the zeal that we're after, and it's the zeal I appreciate. S tier, crazy as hell. Moving on, I can't believe Melanie Martinez is still a thing. Melanie Martinez fans are called crybabies, but I also read somewhere that Melanie Martinez has started calling them earthlings because she's got this, well, in addition to like being like a baby child thing, she's now an alien baby child fairy princess wife. Crybabies really adore Melanie Martinez for her childlike wonder and creativity uh, when they're not apologists for assault allegations made against her. It looks like crybabies are looking past a lot of shit to feel a connection with their favorite artists, and that's pretty crazy. B tier. 
Do you get what I'm doing here? Do you see my methodology? Because even if like you're universally cringe or whatever the hell, I'm putting you at the top. We are celebrating and also talking shit today. Next, we have Dave Matthews Band fans. Dave Matthews and his music really blur the line between jam band music and shit that's actually worth listening to. That was a joke for all you jam band haters. Dave Matthews Band fans are really most well known for how often they like to tout how many times they've seen the band, but actually what they mean is how many times they've seen Dave, because anytime you meet a Dave Matthews Band fan, they call Dave Matthews Dave like they know the guy personally. It's like they invite him over on a Thursday and take edibles and watch meme compilations with him. But anyway, the shows are the central part of the DMB experience. You see him in one city, you travel to the next the next day to go see him again. I had always heard stories that Dave Matthews Band concerts were like giant frat parties. So I was a little concerned when I actually got into liking the Dave Matthews Band and he was swinging by my town, but I was pleasantly surprised. Like I, I would say that it was one of the most diverse shows I've ever been to. Every culture walk of life was there. You had your hippies, your aforementioned frat bros, your grannies. There was this 80 year old woman at the show and as we were walking away this guy was like I've seen Dave 42 times tomorrow will be 43 what? and this old lady pushing a walker looks back at him and says I've seen Dave 80 times and that's just how much people love Dave they can't get enough of him I think I can sum up Dave Matthews' music uh, by just being very uplifting. You know, he writes about love and getting over past traumas, just kind of universal truth shit. And I think that kind of plays into how diverse the concert was. So I'm calling it right down the middle, C tier, inoffensive and light. Next, we got the beehive. Yas, the queen is here. We run shit. And it's kind of hard not to love Beyonce, right? I mean, for one, she's gorgeous. Two, she cranks out hit after hit after hit to stay relevant and on top of the pop game for the last 20 or something years. Yeah, universally liked. No need to be crazy about it, right? Luna. They're coming. Yeah, the beehive doesn't really play by anybody else's rules. They'll mess you up something fierce if you use the queen's name in vain. I'll put a good video right here that kind of goes over some of the Beehive's greatest hits, but uh, yeah, no, they don't fuck around. And I'm just really enamored with the fact that Beyonce being on top of the game just isn't enough for the Beehive. They somehow need more validation. For this, the Beehive gets saddled in the A tier. Great crazy zeal for an artist, but why? Compensating? God, I cannot wait for the comments on this video. Uh, moving on, we have Jimmy Buffett. I hate Jimmy Buffett. I think his island getaway corona time shtick is just really dumb. And I guess that's what makes his fans, or they're called the parrot heads, uh, so interesting to me. Parrot heads really fueled Jimmy Buffett into unimaginable wealth when he marketed his line of restaurants and real estate properties to them that gave him so much cash that he sailed away to the great sandbar in the sky when he died. If you want to look like a Jimmy Buffett fan, all you got to do is put on a vacation shirt and have red pink skin. But I really don't know how much longer this fan base is going to be around for. They're uh, getting a little long in the tooth, if you know what I mean. But Jimmy Buffett happened, Margaritaville happened, Parrot heads happened. Between all of it, Parrot Heads gave a Hall of Fame performance. A tier. Uh, next up are Drake fans. Um, this is going to be a long video. Holy shit. I feel like the people who really love Drake and tout that they're Drake fans are just as boring as the last five years of music that he put out. Drake is a pretty goofy guy, um, albeit unintentionally. Uh, but yeah, boring. Do better. D tier. Get creative. I need emotion. Fuckery. Also, before we go any further, uh, you'll notice that there's no country music fan bases on the list. Um, I know I'm wearing the Brad Paisley t-shirt, um, but I bought this out of a meme because I thought it was funny. I don't listen to Brad Paisley. I do like some country music, though, but I just couldn't land on a good fan base to include in the video. So if I'm missing any big, crazy country music fan bases, let me know down in the comments. Maybe I make another one of these. Anyway, Wu-Tang Clan fans are pretty chill. Wu-Tang Clan somehow managed to convince the record-buying public that you could be both gangsta and a samurai at the same time. Wu-Tang has this mythical air around them, which is only perpetuated when you hear about stories of their $4 million album, uh, which was originally only sold for $2 million to that uh, pharma bro guy, uh, but some other dipshit lawyer bought it for $4 million when pharma bro got locked up. 
And that's really the simplest way to stereotype a Wu-Tang Clan fan. White and nerdy. B tier. Next we have Rihanna's Navy, which I did not know existed before researching for this video, and immediately goes to F as a result. Just kidding, that's not the reason why I put them in F tier. It's because it's kind of like the Beyonce thing again, you don't really need a ton of reason to like Rihanna. At her musical peak, she was making great pop songs, and now she's leveraged her fame and her retirement by releasing a very successful cosmetics line. So all the Navy is in my eyes is a billionaire fan club, uh, but albeit much more tolerable than the Elon Musk fuckboys. F tier because out of all the other fan bases on this list, they're the least insufferable. Not insufferable. Does that make them sufferable? Like you can suffer for them? Uh, we found ourselves at the bottom of the list, so let's climb all the way back up to the top and go over our next S tier fan base, Deadheads. Deadheads are the loyal lysergic acid diethylamide lovers of the Grateful Dead. And the Grateful Dead is the jam band to end all of jam bands. And what makes Deadheads a first ballot crazy fan base is multifaceted. The parking lots of Dead shows basically hosted a traveling local economy as people would follow the band from city to city, selling food, tie-dyes, trinkets, and even drugs to pay for gas and a ticket to the next show. Like Dave Matthews, but turned up to a billion, the live show experience is what the Deadheads are after, considering the band has a bazillion live albums on Spotify. Even though the Grateful Dead have been around for a really long time, I don't think Deadheads really age. Because if you've seen people wearing this shit, um, they're probably a deadhead. Like, nobody's gonna wear that voluntarily. And actually, I do consider myself to be a casual deadhead, even though I've never seen them in concert and don't pray daily that Jerry Garcia will rise again. And as far as the drip goes, it's really your standard hippie garb or whatever you walked out of bed wearing. Not exceptional, but distinct and consistent. S tier. Now, you might be thinking that this is the fan base I alluded to earlier that I include myself in. No. <laughs> I'm much crazier than that. All right, next up on the list we have fuck. Do I have to talk about Kanye? Should have called this video how to kill a channel under 100 subs. I'll just say this. Um, if you think anything Kanye dropped in the last five years was anything but mid, you actually think that his clothing line is valued for what it's being shilled for, and you stand behind all of his crazy anti-Semitic drivel, you're insane. A tier. People who I think are a little less insane than you Kanye boys and girls are Gorillaz fans. Gorillaz is objectively fantastic, maybe not the last couple projects, but Damon Albarn has managed to keep his nerdy little fans hungry for the past 20 years. What really gets me about Gorillaz fans is the amount of lore that there is, because it's not enough to just listen to the fucking song. No, 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 you gotta know what the person the band is doing at the time, because if you don't know, the Gorillaz don't exist. Gorillaz is more of a concept band because the members of the band are cartoon characters. Even the green guy from Powerpuff Girls is in the band now. It's not like he was always there. There is a story as to how he got into the band. And I like talking about the behind the scenes stuff of bands like the power dynamic with Roger Waters and David Gilmore and Pink Floyd. But when you start bringing lore into it you start to lose me a little bit it's all very meta and it's all very cute but honestly you could just give me five four and i'm a happy camper you lot are fairly inoffensive c tier next up are suicide boys fans funny story um i was in detroit once and i was driving around the downtown area and i saw this crazy looking building so i drove up closer to inspect and as i got closer there was just a line of the scariest looking people I've ever seen in my entire life uh, wrapping around the building. Just like a lot of sullen eyes and wife beaters. So I'm thinking, what the hell are they lining up for? Is this a show? And I drive around the corner to see the marquee and sure as shit, it's Suicide Boys. This actually got me kind of curious in the group because I knew that there was something I was missing. I can't just be judging people like that. And I will say that considering the heavy topics that Suicide Boys get into, um, it's no surprise that maybe their fans look a little bit scary because life is scary. But this doesn't make y'all less scary. Smile. But yeah, B tier. Uh, keep being scary. Moving on, we got Nicki Minaj and the Barbs. I've ebbed and flowed on how much I can stand Nicki Minaj, and that's extended towards the barbs as well. You could look at it for what it is, eccentric people liking what an eccentric person is putting down, but maybe not when that eccentricity manifests itself by you telling your fans not to make threats to other people on your behalf, 
when you yourself threatened your husband's assault victim. But no matter how many times Nicki Minaj gets into controversy, you will never be able to lift that veil off of the barbs. A tier shit. Next we have Olivia Rodrigo and um, yeah, I mean, you know, 11 year olds are cool, I guess. D tier. Someone else who has an army of 11 year olds at their beck and call is Taylor Swift and her Swifties. Had to do it. You know I had to do it. I couldn't not talk about them. You were tired of hearing about them. I know, so am I. But guess what, we're talking about them. I think 2023 was not only a landmark year for the Swifties, but a landmark year for anybody else who wants to get up on stage and play music. What the Swifties were able to do to local economies during the US run of the Eras tour is nothing short of ridiculous. Forget COVID stimulus checks, just have Taylor Swift play a show in your city. And to add to the insanity that was the Eras tour, you had the non-fucking stop sports media attention when it was revealed that Taylor was dating Travis Kelsey of the Kansas City Chiefs. TV ratings were up, ticket sales were up, all of our dads were screaming at the TV telling the cameras to get off at Taylor Swift, but the Swifties' allegiances to their god queen would take this spectacular media fair all the way to the Super Bowl, just in time, because we were all sick and tired of looking at it. Although one of my favorite things about the Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey arc was all the Swifties on Twitter telling Taylor that Travis was a red flag because he yelled at Andy Reid during the Super Bowl. But the real red flag was dating this guy after you heard him speak approximately one time. Beautiful trophy. Huh? Hey, I got some wise words for that Cincinnati mayor. Know your role and shut your mouth, you jabroni. Throw in the Swifty conspiracies on hidden messages in the music and how ungodly priced the secondhand market is for her merchandise, and what you have is a perfect formula for an S tier crazy fan base. Locked in. Meanwhile, you have another crazy fan base that wants what Taylor Swift fans have in Ariana Grande fans. I guess they're called Airheads? Ari Heads? Do better. I think Ariana Grande's fine. Um. You know, Thank You Next was fun and catchy, and it would make sense that people would follow her career from Nickelodeon into her music career. And after a cursory browse of the subreddit, uh, it really seems that a lot of the discourse is around who she is or isn't dating at the time, with less venture capital than Swifties, though. Although on the subreddit for her fan base, there was a lot of body shaming towards Ariana Grande, like it was equal amounts talking shit about Ariana Grande and how she's awesome. You gotta take more control of your subreddit airheads, D tier. Now for our last three, we'll start making our way back up the tier list to B tier with Pitbull fans. I went to college with a couple of these folk and they're genuinely just interested in having a good time, much like Pitbull is. And like Pitbull is not great. Um, I will never not laugh at the absurdity that is his Kodak line. Me not working hard. Yeah, right, picture that with a Kodak. I better yet, go to Times Square, take a picture of me with a Kodak. Like, I'll never be able to take Pitbull seriously, but the best part about him and his fans is that they know that and they don't give a shit. It's astounding to me that people go as hog wild for Pitbull as they do, so I can't put him any lower than B, I don't think. Moving up the tier, we got BTS fans, or ARMY, all caps. The BTS moment we had a few years back was quite exceptional. I think America had primarily gotten over the pop boy band thing, but the thing is, K-pop isn't just any pop boy band thing. Now, K-pop stands here in America is not a new thing, as they've been following the rise of the genre for a while, but what better group to introduce K-pop to the masses than a bunch of cute-as-hell Korean lads? But of course, like everything else we do here in America, it has to be turned vitriolic and disrespectful. The army is motivated and ready to strike at any ill-intented tweet towards their boys. But is BTS even that good? Well, I'd say it was a return to form with boy bands, but there's a special twist to it because there's a couple guys in the band who just stand there and look hot. Good enough for the army and good enough for me, A tier. And ladies and gentlemen, we've made it to the last fan base, the one that I happen to identify the most with. Hopefully I haven't caused too much of a ruckus with all my facetious ranting on fan bases, but this is kind of an ode to crazy fan bases because I can relate to it so much. I appreciate you. Because if we're not devout to millionaires who don't even know that we exist, who else will be? It's up to us to bring up these artists at parties and kill the vibe for everybody. So without further ado, the last crazy fan base we're going to talk about today is... It. Yeah, so Tool is the greatest band that's ever existed on the face of the planet, and if you say otherwise, not only are you helplessly stupid, but you're wrong. I'd hate to see you in this position, so I would recommend to you one of the five studio albums that they've released in their 30-year history. 
Oh, what's that? I'm sorry. Oh, you don't know what those albums are? Well, let me show you. Uh, so this is Undertow, released in 1992, which features their big breakout hit, Sober. And they followed that up with their very successful sophomore effort, Anima. And this album goes over topics like the apocalypse, self-sabotaging over indulgence, and fisting. And for their third album, Lateralis, you'll enjoy a phenomenal ride of psychedelic self-discovery. And their fourth album, 10,000 Days, came out in 2006 and won a Grammy for its CD design. There's really no way to like show this to you, uh, but if you look at it like uh, this, it looks 3D and it's really cool. And then they waited 13 years to drop this bad boy, Fear Inoculum. And the craziest thing about this album on CD is the um, video that plays when you open it up. Um, I haven't charged this thing in a while, so the video is not playing. Um, but it's a six minute video that plays on here. And for the first time in your life, you will get to say the words, Ah shit, I forgot to charge my album. And if you thought I was annoying with that, well, good news. So is every other Tool fan. I got into Tool in 2019 when they had first got put on Spotify. I had heard the name, I had heard a few songs, but I was really pushed away by the band because, well, all the Tool fans I knew were just that, Tools. Like, shut the fuck up, I don't care. Talk to me about the Fibonacci sequence. Like, when I found Tool, I didn't think I could get into a band again like I did in middle school with the Beatles or Green Day. But I found Tool at a time when I was older and more mature and I could really get down with the more intellectual concepts that the band was trying to drop down on me, beyond songs about fisting. But enough about me, let's talk about the Tool fans. They're insufferable. The best way I can describe Tool fans is they are to music what Rick and Morty fans are to television. Like, it's very much, you have to have a high IQ to understand this shit. Like, it was a rough couple months for my coworkers when I got into Tool, because all conversations revolved around it. And I happen to think a lot of the Tool fans take the band way too seriously. Like, yes, they do get into some intellectual concepts, and they are rather profound in some ways. But they also, like I said, make songs about fisting. Also, the back of this shirt, um, so yeah. And while they might not have a $4 million album like Wu-Tang, they do stack up pretty well with Taylor Swift's aftermarket and in some ways exceeds that. Because if you ever go to a Tool show, you'll notice that people will head straight towards the merch line to pick up one of their posters. Uh, I went to a Tool show and saw a guy buying seven posters that were $70 and then flipped them on eBay for about $900 each. I, I have two, two tool posters. And I hate to bring up Taylor Swift again, but it was a great moment for the tool fan base when Fear Inoculum dropped at the same time Lover by Taylor Swift did, and this beat it out for number one. Swifties on Twitter were going crazy asking who Tool was and how they could bomb the ratings. And the Tool subreddit was just eating up all of the cope that they could get from the Swifties. Which I think is especially hilarious and pathetic, considering that most Tool fans are Gen Xers. So I swallow no pride at all putting me and other Tool fans alike in the tippy top of the crazy music fanbase tier list. <laughs> Hey, if you've made it this far into the video, uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, this is just me talking to you straight right now. Um, I know this was a little bit more incendiary than some of the other content I've been putting out, but I've been wanting to make a video like this for quite a while and just had to get it on out there. Also, this is my second music related video in a row and I don't really want to get typecast or pigeonholed into any one section of YouTube commentary. Um, we're going to be jumping around a little bit, uh, but for the people who have commented and liked and even just watched uh, my last few videos, uh, thank you. Um, I really appreciate it. Yeah. Fourteen years ago today, a Dave Matthews Band tour bus dumped hundreds of pounds of human waste on more than 100 passengers floating in a cruise boat along the Chicago River under Kinsey Street. The